Hey guys, welcome to the Fairy Tale Podcast, your podcast for the greatest guild in the world. <laughs> I'm getting all fired up just thinking about this episode. So hey out there everybody, uh, we are here with our next interview. We are sitting down with nerdcore rapper Richie Branson. Uh, <laughs> been a while since we last talked to you. We weren't a fairy tale podcast back then. We were at Konoha Corner, so it's been like four years, somewhere around there. Yeah. Maybe three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a long time. It's been a long time. Uh, obviously you've put out a lot more stuff since then and you've been, <laughs> you've been touring at conventions and stuff too, I see. So, uh, yeah. what all have you been up to that you can share with everybody? Man, I've been, uh, just working, man. I put out a, uh, Chrono Trigger album that mm -hmm. charted Billboard. That was really cool. That's uh, really cool. A whole bunch of more anime and now I'm getting ready to launch my first uh, full-length studio album. I'm actually in the middle of a Kickstarter campaign for that right now. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, yeah, I see that your your anime, uh, like the the different types of anime that you've been rapping about, has grown. Your anime library or collection, rather. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So what is a what is an anime that you've checked out recently that you were like, man, I really want to talk about that. Uh, it's this one called, I just started watching it. Uh, it's called Yushio and Tora. Mm. And, uh, it's I saw really dope. that. It's I really saw dope. I a thing for it on Crunchyroll. What's it about? I didn't actually click it. I just saw it. I recognized the title. Well, it's about this kid and his dad's a priest. Uh, like, like, and they do like this demon slaying, you know, like, it's like a demon slaying priest. And his father goes out on vacation and he stumbles upon this beast in the basement, like a demon that's been trapped by this spear um, that's uh, got these demon slaying characteristics. And so, you know, the demon's like trying to convince the boy to let him go, but he's telling him like, yeah, when you let me go, I'm going to eat you, you know? And so it, it, they form this strange partnership that's that's really interesting. It's It reminds me of a good buddy cop movie, like on some... <laughs> uh, you know, like some, I don't know, rush hour type stuff, but <laughs> demons. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. But there's that. I just finished JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh, uh, that's going to be very popular. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope it comes back. Well, I know they're going to come back with the, with the, new, uh, with the new series. Mm -hmm. And um, what else have I been watching? Uh, I finally, after a long time, went back and watched the final episode of Fist of the North Star. Wow. And I, I don't know how I got all the way to the last episode and just forgot to watch the last one. <laughs> but I went back and did that. I've done that. So, yeah, you know. And um, in between that, just uh, just really getting back in the swing of things. I've mm -hmm. sort of, I've been uh, learning how to program and, and getting into game development. So that's been going pretty well. Yeah, and, I heard. Uh, I I saw that you'd been actually like getting into uh, uh, the gaming programming side of stuff when um, when I added you on uh, LinkedIn, and I was like, wait a minute, he's been working on gaming stuff. What? <laughs> yeah, it's just been it's been a wild year. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a wild year, so I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm feeling good, and uh, I'm excited. Really mm. excited. And uh, really quickly, I just want to apologize to our listeners real quick. Uh, this is actually taking place right before we have to do a live show. So we had to we're, we're going to be doing this as a much quicker interview than probably the other ones that you hear uh, on the rest of episode 200. And it's not because we don't want to hang out with Richie. It's, <laughs> we do want to hang out with Richie. We wouldn't have brought him on if we didn't. Uh, it's just unfortunately we, <laughs> we've got to set up for a show in like 20 minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> he said he's got to do some stuff too. So yeah, yeah so, so it's, it kind of kind of balances out. It kind of balances out. Oh, it's not it's not your fault. I was I was trying to make it seem like it was our fault instead of yours. Come hey, on. I was saying it. I was just saying it worked out really well. I wasn't yeah. placing blame on anybody. <laughs> no. And hey, look at that! It works out. So what are some what are some other series that you've uh, kind of 
caught glimpses of that you were like, man, I'd really like to watch that series or uh, stuff. Al Noah Zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know I've why I haven't really gotten good. past the second episode, but um, it's got everything that I like in a series. It's got Mecca, and uh, it's got a soundtrack by Hiroyuki Sawano, so mm-hmm. I really need to get back in that and finish that. Um, <laughs> I think because of all the work we've been doing with Infinity's Light, uh, we've we've been mostly listening to pretty much everything Nobu Ometsu lately. So it's been like a Final Fantasy kick for us. Wow, yeah, Nobu is awesome, man. Like, right? Gosh, <laughs> I missed his concert. I was so disappointed. Oh, where did he have it at? I think he was. It was like at Otakon, like last year or something. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. I was just at Otakon this year. Yeah. Um, he was at Orlando Nerd Fest. Uh, was it last year? Yeah, it was last year. Mm-hmm. And I saw him live. That was the most surreal experience ever with the Earthbound Papas. We were actually at Otakon, but we had to leave uh, early on Sunday to get back home, which means we missed, uh, and this was like a couple of years back, we missed the Yoko Kano concert. And I was oh, so bummed. Man. Oh, sad. I was like, no, all of my Cowboy Beef up. <laughs> man that's crazy uh if somebody came up to you and said they, they really liked your stuff but they you know what is a series that you would definitely recommend to them if they didn't know like uh wh- one anime that they weren't familiar with of all the stuff that you've rapped about what is the one anime you would plug to them well it actually is the anime that's inspiring my next album uh, oh. Login. Oh, yeah, girl, I haven't it. watched that yet. It's on my list. God, you need to watch it. Definitely it's... in my top. Right now I do. It's in my top five. Maybe sometimes I put it in my top three, depending on what day of the week it is. But yeah, <laughs> girl, Login is incredible, incredible. Um, it's very motivational. Like you'll feel like you could take on the world after you watch Guru Login. Like it's really good. You feel like you could take on the whole universe, man. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> And the music is the music's really kind of just varied and random in that series too. So it kind of that's going to be interesting to seeing how you, what like my whole guessing process as to which song you're going to use. Yeah, like they have a lot of really good ones. Yeah, even the theme song, like the one I sampled for uh, the song that I did uh, from the underground of the stars was mm. I, I did like a piano cover of it, and it was really yeah. dope. Yeah, I've, I've got that on my iTunes. I definitely remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite songs. I don't, I, I guess uh, Guy Nax or whoever owns the animation rights didn't like the AMV, so they took it off YouTube. Oh. I was so sad. You know, most of my fans, uh, they, they discover me either on YouTube or Facebook. Right. So I might upload it to Facebook and, you know. And what, what cons have you been hitting up lately? Because I know you've done um, a lot. I did Otakon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just did Orlando Nerd Fest. I did San Japan. Mm. Um, I did uh, Omnicon. Uh, what else have I done recently? Uh, there was another good one. Um, I'll be doing... There's a con coming up next year for the first time in Oregon called Ready, Set, Fight Con. It's a fighting game convention that I'm Oh, doing. sweet. Um, and I'm also doing PAX, uh, actually in a couple weeks, I'm doing a, there's a concert that they're having off site. Of and PAX then, Prime? Yeah, PAX Prime. Uh, I've got you know somebody that's going to that one. We know somebody. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I was actually, I was actually telling, uh, telling him about you because he's a big, uh, he's a big mech fan. Like, oh, really? Mech anime. And I was like, oh, well, you gotta hear Richie Branson rapping about Gundam, dude. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you should totally do that. So now that I know, yeah, Greg Greg lives in Seattle, so he's going to be over at PAX Prime. Uh, he said he's got uh, tickets and stuff already, so I know what to tell him tonight. Yeah, tell him <laughs> I'll be around. I have a panel uh, with MC Frontalot, Kadesh Flow, Shubzilla, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm trying to think who else is on that panel. It's a lot of people, but it's going to be a dope nerdcore hip-hop panel that i think also i seriously am jealous because you get to go to pax prime so yeah (laughs) i just i I got lucky i guess what can i say (laughs) yeah i i I know that feel too (laughs) yeah it was really crazy when they had they have a pax south and i live in san antonio so i got to go to that and that was oh that's awesome that was my first PAX, and they're like, well, this is nothing compared to PAX Prime, so I'm really excited <laughs> uh, 
see what Pax Prime is all about. Next, Very now, exciting. now you just need to start rapping about Rooster Teeth, and you'll go to RTX, no problem. Yeah, and I'm really cool with the Rooster Teeth uh-huh. too. I'm actually really good. I was really good friends with uh, Mani Um, mm-hmm. the head animator of um, oh, yeah. Ruby. You know, and it's it's sad that he passed mm-hmm. away. Yeah, and uh, Carrie Shawcross and Shane Newell and a lot of the people. Uh, over there I'm really cool with so and it's funny because Rooster Teeth is literally like a 40 minute drive from my house so uh, I'm gonna nice. try to get more uh, try to get more um, at, I guess get more cool with them again you know I've been sort of off on random tangents but you know Rooster Teeth they're awesome people man really awesome people mm. I hope they're listening <laughs> <laughs> so you you hear this Rooster Teeth well you've got a good chance consider that <laughs> Michael Jones, who is the uh, – he's he's actually one of the voice actors in Ruby. He plays the the monkey kind of guy, the guy with the blonde hair and the tail. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is Sting in Fairy Tale. And so oh, okay. You've got a good chance of that because we actually converse over Skype. He's wow, responsible okay. for about – I'd say about 250 of our followers – Wow! He just he he re anytime he retweets anything from us, we instantly gain another fifty to seventy five followers. It's crazy. Instant, right? What sports anime have you been checking out? Because I'm kind of curious if you've been getting into any sports anime. Uh, Hajime no Ippo. Yes, love it. Um, I need to get more into Kuroko no basketball. Oh, Kuroko's basketball. Yes. Uh, it actually just finished like a couple of months ago. So really? 75 is the end of it. Like, all three seasons, 75 episodes. Okay, I'll have to check that out. And uh, if you want just a, a quick series, before it, at least do it before mid-October, because season two is coming out. Uh, I, obviously, Mira, you know this one's coming. Haikyuu. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely adorable. And uh, if I was going to pitch it to you, there is actually a AMV that uh, somebody did to haiku to remember the name by fort minor and it so freaking works with it especially once you watch the series you go back and watch the video again it totally works wow okay okay yeah. i have to check that it out is, it is a volleyball anime and it's actually really really interesting volleyball uh, huh? what's it called again haiku h uh, well i'll just type it out <laughs> There you go. It's it's uh, cute. I know Sentai, I like it I know Sentai Filmworks picked it up, so I'm hoping that they're going to be dubbing it for distribution in the U.S. Can't oh man, see how that goes? Is it on Crunchyroll? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Okay. And season two will be coming out mid-October, man. It's only like 25 episodes. Wow. It's, okay. Yeah. It's a it's a, it's absolutely adorable, and you know, it, as typical yeah. of sports anime. But I love I love pimping this just because it's like as much of a Naruto as I was. Like, I like this series because there's finally a Hinata I can root for. Because huh. <laughs> <laughs> the main character is Hinata, and he's, like, he's like short, and he's got orange hair, and he's he's got that positive, lovable attitude of, like, I won't give up. And it, regardless of the fact of how short he is, he, he actually has a really good jump, and he likes spiking the ball. It's super awesome. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, volleyball is a very uh, it's a very interesting sport. I mean, it doesn't get a lot of credit for how intense it is. Like it's volleyball is really crazy. <laughs> and you'll see people probably uh, like once you start watching shows like Kuroko's Basketball or Haikyuu, you're going to start noticing the cosplays as soon as you see them at cons. Because I was we were at Akai Con just like last weekend, and there were so many Haikyuu cosplayers, and there were so many Kuroko cosplayers, and I was like, I know you, I know all of this. <laughs> Makes you feel really good when you can recognize characters that you didn't before. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. That's one thing. It kind of makes you a cosplay hipster. Like, yeah, I know. That. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I know exactly what. And that then is. Uh, another show that I saw on uh, Crunchyroll that I was super surprised to find out was on uh, that was an actual anime. I Shield Twenty One. It's an anime about American football in Japan, and I'm like, wait, what? Wow! They, they play American football in Japan. What? That's got to be pretty cool. Yeah, and the main character is a running back. So there you go. <laughs> You know, especially, like, I like watching, like, football or, like, those old-school, like, NFL movies or NFL yeah. films. Mm-hmm. 
you know, where they have like the crazy, if it has like that old school, like inspirational Rocky sounding me, uh, music, man, I would, I would go crazy. Oh uh, man, you will, you will like the music for Ice Shield 21. It does get a little bit crazy considering their captain is ridiculous and somehow manages to carry firearms into school for no reason. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculously stupid, but it's hilarious. That's crazy. But yeah, I definitely recommend Haikyuu. I'm I'm hoping next year I'll hear a Haikyuu rap from Richie and I can be like, I made him, wa I told him to watch that show. That was me. I did that. I d well, you no, I didn't me. do that. I just, I helped. I helped. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, fine. I inspired that. I inspired that. I mean. <laughs> you really just might, like, for real. <laughs> Seriously, like, I, I like, uh, volleyball is an interesting sport. Oh, yeah. So, well, and that's the other thing is like because I didn't know anything about volleyball when I went in, and this is this is true of pretty much all sports anime. If, mm -hmm. Even if you don't know the sport, it's so interesting to watch because they will actually explain it, and you feel like you've gr you've learned so much about that sport from watching the series. And like the more you learn, the more invested you become in it because now you actually know why this character or this position is important and what all they do, and. And sometimes it's just as gratifying if you do know the sport because you're like, oh, yes, I know that. Or, you know, or sometimes there's like little obscure things about the sport that you just didn't know. It was the same thing with, oh, God, uh, Ace of Diamond, which is. Yeah, the baseball, right? Yeah. And that yeah. one, the anime is nowhere near ending. The manga ended in January, or at least part <laughs> one of the manga ended in January. And uh, if it's not this week, it'll be next week that part two of the manga starts up. Hmm. And that manga started around the same time that Fairy Tale did. They both are in the same uh, magazine. So it's crazy. I'm like, wow. And so look forward to look forward to the sports album coming out 2016. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here plugging anime away. Just here, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. This is what sports, I do. If yeah. you you, it's true. Anime. That's why I don't watch anything because you say you tell me to watch too many things, and I'm just like, this nope, is what, it's not gonna this happen. Is what happens. This is what happens when people come over and they're like, and I'm like, you haven't seen this? Oh my god, you must see this. And so, yeah, as Mira Jane can attest, eleven episodes of Haikyuu that we sat down and watched. Yeah, wow. and I won't probably get to the other ones till eventually. Till eventually, yes. I mean, I like it a lot. Don't get me wrong. I just have so many other things to watch. Right, and and the. I mean, we do a weekly shows segment. That I want to watch. We do a weekly segment called "What's New in Animu." So every which week. doesn't help because I yeah like I have to watch that and then I have to finish my shows and then I have to there's so too, basically too many you're, things. you're having to watch and it's it's summer so I want to be outside. <laughs> We're having to watch and review a new anime every week, basically. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, we're not reviewing anime that's like if it's if it's like more than. 25 episodes nah it's not happening which is weird because at first i thought this was 20 the one that we're reviewing tonight was 25 episodes it's 28 and i was like eh well close enough the 28 is like the classic yeah we've had a lot of 12 episodes that we've reviewed too. which are perfect i love those i like those ones yeah we do <laughs> i like those ones a lot <laughs> <laughs> because then I can do other things, like go outside. It's summer in Utah, and that's just what you do. You go outside. And it's wonderful. Well, Mira, did you have any, any questions you wanted to ask before we have to wrap things up? I was just going to ask how you think of your lyrics and, like, pick your songs and stuff. Because, like, this is not a thing I understand anything about. Like, he writes parodies all the time, and it's like, I, nope. So parodies I was are just wondering totally how you different beast. do it. Oh yeah, they are. Oh yeah, well right, but I'm thinking parodies is like a stepping in my head, not because it actually <laughs> is, but like a stepping stone. How how how? Where does your inspiration come from? I guess is is what I'm trying to get at. Well, it has to be like an anime that like I can emotionally be invested in. Like if it's kind of like something that's just meh, then I probably won't get her. I won't probably be able to forge a connection. Usually, like, you know, I tend to write my, my lyrics, like, from the point of view of a particular character, mm. you know, that I can identify okay. with the most. So, usually an anime would have to have a standout character, whether it's the hero or the villain. Somebody that I can say, yeah, that's mm -hmm. really bad. Like, that's really dope. I can really rock with that. And then it's sort of, like, just kind of 
all goes from there. Like Gundam Wing, like what really drew me into rapping about that was Zex Marquis. Like the first song I recorded was Zex, uh, was Marquis Dreams. And everything else as far as my interest just sort of spawned from that. And so with Gurren Lagann, it was Kamina. Um, Yu Yu Hakusho was Taguro. Oh. I can name a, a, an iconic character from every series that I've watched that's really made me just say, wow, I, yeah, that's dope. I got to watch this anime. So as long as there's something in there, then, you know, that, that sort of just draws me in for sure. Uh, okay. And finally, uh, going back to some old school stuff real quick with the Bring Toonami Back rap. You mentioned that you would like to see Code Geass, even though you hadn't seen it then. Have you actually watched Code Geass now? No, I still haven't watched it. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. All you need to do is watch Code Mint episode 16, just a portion of it, just the soup part. Mm-hmm. See what Purple Eyes did with it, with I'm at soup. That's that's all you really need to know. That's all I need to know. <laughs> and see, it's funny, like, like sometimes, s- like, the albums that I, I do... Um, they end up kind of working out uh, just based off of like a glimpse of an episode that gets me like a hunter, hunter, hunter. What got me into hunter, hunter was the episode where Netero fought uh, the ant King. Oh, that episode like got me like hooked. I was like, Oh my God, I got to watch this series. So I binge watched hunter, hunter, like two days straight till I got to that episode. And I was just, it was amazing. So hunter, hunter, also a really, 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 really good anime as well. Can't even lie. Like, Hunter Hunter is really good. All right. So that's going to be it for us. Uh, stay tuned for the next interview coming right up, guys. Mm-hmm.